the whirlpool going here. I've always had an entrepreneurial itch. I work in consulting, specifically focusing on data science. Making whiskey was a fun side project that we started uh, during COVID as something to, to keep us busy. There are a lot of smaller craft distillers that are out there and really uh, changing, changing the world of whiskey. I am a government contracts attorney. I got into whiskey many years ago and I started to learn as much as I could about it. We have no background in doing this. We, we had no idea what we were doing, but, and we're learning along the way, and it's, it's a great ride so far. We're reviving an old 110-year-old brand for a few reasons. One is we have a passion for history. And there's some really, really interesting stories out there through the Mount Pleasant Club whiskey brand. And we want to bring those out in, in the products that we bring to market. Mount Pleasant was originally a village established after the Civil War. Streetcar came up Mount Pleasant Street here, and the end of the line was at Park Road. And at that point, this land became valuable to develop. It hadn't been developed yet. Then businesses started locating along Mount Pleasant Street. And one of the first was this one-story building. It's now a laundromat. And then some of these other businesses appeared in this block. Today it's a bus turnaround, but the streetcar stopped down where the bus stops, and there was a platform and people got on and off. Row houses mostly started being built along here in all of these blocks west of Mount Pleasant Street. Still a beautiful neighborhood. Mount Pleasant was originally a New England village and uh, it was dry. So that was one of the uh, virtues of it. Temperance movement was, was a huge thing in the 19th century and into the 20th century. There were no liquor um, establishments in Mount Pleasant. Prohibition hit in D.C. earlier than nationally. It started November 1st, 1917. The big premise of the temperance movement was that it was bad for families, it was bad for women and children because the husband would take his whole paycheck and drink it up in the saloons and they'd be impoverished, and then he'd, on top of it, you know, be abusive. This Mount Pleasant brand whiskey came about when somebody in Mount Pleasant found a, an old whiskey bottle in their house when they were renovating. It was practice, workmen drinking on the job. Some people say that it's to celebrate the finishing the house, to, to put a bottle in, I'm not sure about that. But I, but I know lots of people who renovated their houses and pulled out walls and found bottles in there, among other things. <laughs> this all got started when my wife and I bought the house that we currently live in. The lady that lived there back in the 80s, they did a renovation. During that renovation, they found a bottle from 1911, and it just sat in her living room, dining room for the next 30 years. And I was fascinated. I thought it was such a cool bottle, and just, I mean, I almost immediately 
started to like look up because it had William Berry, 2024, 14th Street. Just, it was intriguing to me, just like digging up what I could on Mr. Berry. And I was able to find a little bit about him. During COVID, we found ourselves hanging out with nothing to do, uh, trying to get outside. While hanging out, we had this idea and decided we were gonna bring this, this old brand back. Not a truck, I'll bring it to my house, then I'll cut the legs off. And I was like, I can't. We weren't gonna go <laughs> sell our houses and try to buy a distillery. <laughs> so I had a friend who owned a distillery in Virginia and she's, she was willing to help us. It's such a cool thing that we should try to revive it. It's like, and that's, that's really how it started. William Barry. Mr. Barry was a Irishman who I think around 1905, 1906, he decided to go into the liquor business and he bought a liquor store from Patrick Nelligan, who was the original producer of Mount Pleasant Club Whiskey. And it was here at 2024 14th Street, the reliable family liquor store. And Barry started to sell Mount Pleasant Club Whiskey at that point. Back then, the brand used the Mount Pleasant name but had no connection to the neighborhood. So yeah, this is U Street, one of the most famous black neighborhoods in the country, really. This was Harlem before Harlem became Harlem. All the jazz clubs up and down U Street, this is where it was at. I mean, Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington was born, or he lived right around the corner from here. Very historic neighborhood, so I imagine there were a lot of African-American foot traffic going up and down here buying, buying the whiskey. November 1st, 1917, that's when Prohibition came to Washington, D.C. It shut down every, it became illegal to sell liquor. William Berry, he tried to fight Prohibition. He, he served on a couple different organizations, committees, to try and push back against Prohibition. I mean, he appeared in the papers a number of times, in the Post and the Evening Star a number of times, speaking out against the um, temperance movement. Barry restarted the brand when Prohibition ended. And after a few years, he passed away as well. And at that point, the, the brand stopped. It ceased to exist. So this is, this is a Mount Pleasant whiskey bottle. We will continue to take forward Mount Pleasant Club brand, releasing two to three batches a year, each named after different streets, each with a different flavor profile. Most definitely it's a neighborhood pride thing. Just living here and, and raising our kids in Mount Pleasant, it's, it's all about neighborhood pride. There is an altruistic purpose for doing all of this. We're giving a portion of our proceeds to local community organizations. We are putting together a vodka product in which we'll donate 100% of the profits to uh, refugees of the war in Ukraine. Uh, give back to the neighborhood. That's a big part of what we're doing.